setting for this film is New York City, America's largest, most diverse urban center. New York is at once a melting pot of cultures, a crossroad for commercial conglomerates, and a forum for the arts. Life here is an audio-visual explosion. There is a complex mixture of people in New York. It's a struggle to combat the overpowering pace of the city, to try to develop an identity which helps you cope with the circus-like atmosphere. In the face of such difficulties, many New Yorkers develop an aggressive and often unusual outlet. Art can be defined as the creation of forms expressive of human feelings. In New York, one of these expressions has been the source of much controversy. Street art was less visible until 1970, when New York youths began an art subculture determined to redesign playground walls and subway trains with an explosion of colorful names and numbers. The vigorous pace of the city makes many feel anonymous, lost in the crowd. Graffiti writing is one way adolescents fight this urban anonymity. This is a mural wall of graffiti in Upper Manhattan. Each piece, as such individual efforts are called, is an exercise in self-expression for ghetto youth. Part of the graffiti mystique is establishing an appropriate nickname, since real names are usually not used. Skylark, Page 505, Smack, and Zero Smash are but a few. Sometimes the name is accompanied by a number, which can indicate either the street address of the writer or the number of pieces he has thrown. The intricacy of design and the flamboyant use of color and space are evidence of the serious intent of the creator. Each graffitist strives to achieve a unique style identified as his own. Lesser attempts are dubbed toys by his peers. Many of these street writers have banded together into writing gangs. Each gang has its own code of symbols which members use to certify their membership and to embellish the interior space of their pieces. Graffitis learn to manipulate markers and spray cans efficiently, so
sometimes using different nozzles to achieve a variety of paint spreads. Quick execution is a keen factor in avoiding apprehension by authorities. The technique of this illegal act is a complex procedure, usually performed in the darkness of night. Playground walls are practice runs for subway pieces. To see your name flash by on the side of a train is the ultimate thrill. Three Yard Boys is the largest, most prestigious writing gang in the city. The leader and founder of this gang is Cliff, considered by many to be the king of graffiti. We call ourselves the Three Yard Boys, you know. Like all the people don't go with the same idea of writing on the train. Some will go to do a burner, you know, as they say, to do, you know, the best piece that you can do using the most colors and putting your name up on the train and as many cars as possible. You're constantly looking, you know, out for the third rail. Your head has to be constantly turning to look out to see if any cops or workmen or conductors are coming, you know, and if, if you go in the yard and cops are there, you know, and they chase you, you know, in order for you to get away, you have to go you know, through something that they can't go through. So usually you go under a train, on top, you know, jump from train to train until you reach, you know, the place, the exit where you think you can get away. I first did it to get around, you know, I just wanted, just like seeing my name, like I leave my name wherever I went, you know, if I went down 34th Street, you know, I'd write my name, you know, just to say I was there. But then when I started getting on the trains, right, to say the first few months, I just wanted to have get as many cars as possible so people could know who I am. I wanted to be recognized as an art form, you know, as a modern art form, you know, and I wanted to stop being classified as vandalism, you know, and destroying public property because blue and silver, you know, adds to the gloom and when you put colors up there, you know, it just livens everything up. If there is such a thing as an average graffiti artist, he is male and between the ages of 12 and 16. Most often is asked the question, why do these kids go to so much trouble just to write their names? There are several reasons. First of all, graffiti writing has become a sport, like handball or stickball, to make life on the street more interesting. At the very least, it's a challenge to be met. To some, writing has become more than a sport. It is an art and an important part of their lives. There is a strict code of ethics that is adhered to by the more serious artists. It is considered bad sportsmanship, for example, to work over what other writers consider to be a masterpiece or to copy someone's style or steal someone's name. Another reason for this fascination with graffiti is seeing your name on a wall or moving by on a train. Graffiti writing becomes both an act of destruction and of possession of a social order which breeds boredom and rebellion. It permits the birth of a new and larger-than-life identity and is one way of making one's mark on society.
Zero. El Marco 164. Tiny. Wave. Tag. Many of these riders stop by the time they are 16. Some will lose interest because they couldn't ever develop an outstanding style. Loss of interest, police brutality, or the fear of being caught and sent to jail all contribute to this end. Some, however, will and have made a connection between their graffiti and the art world. In 1974, there was a successful showing of graffitists at the Razor Gallery in Soho. The United Graffiti Artists, UGA, is a graffiti artist workshop with membership restricted to a dozen veteran graffitists. This 30-foot mural was a collaborative effort of the group. Miko is one of the more political UGA members. He is Puerto Rican and shows his heritage in the color and design of his piece. Phase two was one of the more heralded graffitis from the UGA showing. This is his masterwork. The Nation of Graffiti Artists, NOGA, is a workshop for graffitis with membership open to anyone who likes to write. Cliff is a key personality at NOGA. Well, I would like for graffiti to get recognized as an art, you know, and to get away what the city calls it as vandalism, you know, and so that, that way if it's recognized and it can be put on canvas or something, maybe it might take away from the excitement of the trains, but it keep people from getting you know, a whole lot of hassles, you know. The future of the graffiti experience is uncertain. At present, the penalties for graffiti writing are severe. The purpose of this film is not to condone an illegal act, but to document a phenomenon. You have to be recognized. That's the highest thing. Some day, bro. 